this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. We're here to lift you and not put you down.
the things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again. You cause your sun to shine on darkest nights. For all that done, we will pour out our love this way. And Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. The hopeless have found there.
Well, welcome to church on a Wednesday night. Great to be together. Anybody visiting, could you show your hands and let's welcome you tonight. It's great to have you with us. All our guests. There's something powerful happening in the atmosphere, something powerful happening in the spiritual realm tonight. As we praise God, He's moving on our behalf. I love Deidre's encouragement right there. Come on, as we praise Him, chains are being broken, people are being set free, people are being healed and restored, and hope's being breathed back into people's souls tonight. It's awesome. You can go ahead and take a seat. Welcome to all those who are watching online tonight. It's good to have you with us as well. Believe in that God is doing something powerful in your life. Wherever you are, driving at home, whatever you're doing, you're a part of this as well tonight. Great to have you with us. I want to take a couple of moments just to, I guess, give some sort of explanation to what we're doing. Many of you will be familiar with this, this part of our service that we call worship, this music part. Many of you are familiar with what we're doing, but maybe some aren't. And I think for all of us, sometimes it's good just to be reminded of the power that is available to us in these moments, in moments just like this. I have seen, literally seen, people healed while we're singing songs, while we're praising God. I've seen people's bodies healed. I've seen people who knew nothing about God come into a night just like this, and somehow in the music, somehow in this atmosphere of worship and praise, they became aware of the fact that God is real and He loves them. And I've seen them break down in tears and give their lives to Jesus Christ in moments like we're experiencing tonight. And we call this praise and worship. And just to kind of try and simplify some of these things, if it's new to you, praise just means to speak well of somebody. The word is very common. We use it in the English language often. Praise means to speak well of somebody. And when we praise God, we're speaking well of Him. As we sing these songs, like many of the songs we've just been singing tonight, we're speaking well of God. Here's the thing. God doesn't need our praise. He doesn't need us to speak well of Him. Actually, what we're doing when we speak well of God is we're reminding ourselves of who He is and how great He is and how good He is and how powerful He is. When we sing, like, sing songs like, what a powerful name the name of Jesus is, that He has no rival and no equal that no one, nothing can stand in his way. When he decides to move, there is nothing that can stop him. We're reminding ourselves that whatever obstacle we might be facing, there's a power that is higher. There's a force that is greater that is working on our behalf. When we speak well of God, we're reminding ourselves of his goodness. And I sometimes imagine it like if I was standing in a room and I could hear people talking in the room next door and they were speaking well of me. We all like that, right? <laughs> we prefer that to hearing them speaking unwell of us. <laughs> but if we hear them speaking well about us, we feel very welcome to walk into that room and join them if they're speaking well of us. And I think it's a little bit like that with God. When we are speaking well of Him, when we're praising Him, the Spirit of God is welcome to inhabit our praises. We're, it's like us saying, God, you're welcome here. Your Spirit's welcome here. You're welcome in my life. You're welcome in this place tonight. And here's what happens. This is the powerful thing. See, we could just do a night of songs and, you know, the music's good. We've got a great band up here and we've got some amazing singers, some talented people mixing sound and doing all the things that we do. And it could just be a nice night of music and some nice songs and maybe you're waiting for us to sing your favorite song. I hope we do, but we might not. I don't know. <laughs> but I would love to encourage you not to miss the power of what is available to you in this moment. See, here's the thing. When we make a decision to praise God, David said in Psalms, King David said, I will praise the Lord. That's a decision. He might not have felt like it, but he said, I will praise the Lord. This is for everybody tonight, whether you feel like it or not, whether it's brand new to you or not, whether you're the kind of person that jumps up and down and screams loudly or you're the kind of person that would prefer to be quiet. It's for you. This is for you. It's for everybody tonight. When we make a decision to praise God, despite how we might feel, Something powerful happens. Our focus shifts. When we remind ourselves of God's greatness, our focus shifts off of ourselves and off of our problems and off of our concerns and our worries and our focus shifts onto God and how great He is. And somewhere in that moment, there's this connection that happens. In all of us, we have a spiritual being in all of us. That's actually the true essence of who we are, our spiritual being. And our spirit connects with the spirit of the living God. And we get a glimpse of the greatness of God. This is available to everybody tonight. 
we can have a glimpse right here in this room, wherever we're watching online, we can have a moment where we connect with God and we are left with no doubt that He is real, that He is good, that He loves us, that He's on our side, that He wants to be with us. And when we realize that, when we realize the greatness of God and the grace of God, when we realize His majesty and His mercy, when we realize that He has done everything to be at one with us, to be present with us. Our natural response as created beings is to worship the God who made us. It's our natural response. We can't help it. And the Bible says that as we worship God, we are transformed more and more into His likeness. That means that we don't leave here the same. That means that as we worship Him, things begin to change on the inside. We're transformed from glory to glory, from strength to strength. He takes us higher and higher that's what's available to us tonight I want to encourage you however you choose to express yourself and hey it's all very natural the people that lift their hands I don't know if you've ever seen people at a sports game I love soccer it's the greatest sport in the world anyone knows that everyone knows I love soccer when my team scores a goal you watch the fans in the stadium they throw their hands in the air they start cheering and shouting and clapping and screaming at the top of their voice well, let me tell you, Jesus has scored the goal of all goals. He's won for all time. <laughs> so it's very natural for us to throw our hands in the air and clap and shout and sing. That just comes naturally. Worship is such an intimate thing. I remember many times when my kids were younger, especially, even now actually, but when, I've come, when I'd come home from being away and they'd hear me open the front door and they'd come run, running down the hallway with their arms out saying, Daddy, 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 Daddy's home. That's what worship's like. When we lift our hands, it's like us saying, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. That's what Abba, Father means. It means Daddy. It's a very personal, intimate term for God, a name for God. And we are like, we, it's like us tonight. We're all saying, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. We're reaching out for Him. And you know, if you're a father or a parent, you know everything in you in that moment just wants to reach out and grab your kids and hug them. God wants to do exactly that for us tonight. He wants to reach out. We're His sons. We're His daughters. He wants to reach out and grab us. Surround us with his love and his mercy. His power is available to you tonight. I want to encourage you to be aware of what's happening. To be aware that the Spirit of God is here. Experience the fullness of everything that God has for you in this moment. Could you pray with me tonight? Lord, we thank you for your presence. Thank you that your Spirit is here. It's real. You're alive. You're moving in this place. We choose right now to focus our attention on you, on your greatness, your goodness, your grace. We choose right now to lean in, to lean into you. I pray, God, that as each one of us opens our hearts to you tonight, that you would do what only you can do through your spirit, that you would touch every single person here, bring healing, bring wholeness, Bring peace, bring joy, be whatever it is that each one of us needs. We thank you that you are able to be all things to all of us all at the same time. So we pray that you would move tonight. In Jesus' name.
your way maker? Do you believe he's your miracle worker? Do you believe he can bring light in the darkness tonight? Do you believe he can set you free? Do you believe he can break the chains in your life tonight? Come on, give him one more big shout of praise and tell him I believe tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! I'm standing in here tonight with a bunch of believers. Amen? Amen. Oh, just stay right here. Just stay in this. Just stay in this attitude of worship right now. Just stay in this attitude of praise. You may be seated for just a minute, but just stay right here with us. This is so good. We're going to get ready and receive our tithing offering tonight. Amen. I just kind of had this thought today. You know, everyone wants to leave a mark in life. But they many times miss the mark because they miss their opportunity. And it can just pass you by that quickly. I love what the writer William Pidden says. He says, I expect to pass through life but once. If therefore there be any kindness I can show or any good thing I can do to any fellow being, let me do it now. And not defer or neglect it as I shall not pass this way again. You know, James 4.14 says this life is like a vapor. It's here one minute and it's gone the next. And, you know, when we give, what we don't realize many times is every time you give, don't miss the opportunity because it can leave a legacy that will last a lifetime and you may not have another chance. Amen? And I just want to encourage you with that tonight. Even, even as we get ready and we're going to pray for, for healing, for needs in your life, man, don't miss this opportunity tonight. God's got something big in store, and he really wants to, to meet you right where you're at, but we can't miss the opportunity, and if we won't do that, we won't miss a mark. Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight for each and every person that's giving. God, every seed we sow tonight, God, is going to make a difference in somebody's life. God, let us not miss this chance. Let us not miss the opportunity. We don't know when we'll pass this way again, God, but we know, Lord Jesus, that you bless every time that we take advantage of the opportunities you give, and God, that can last a lifetime, a legacy. So I thank you for every person tonight as they give. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said amen. God bless you tonight.
perfect love is casting out fear Cause you are the God of all power And it is your will that my life is here Sickness can stay any longer Your perfect love is casting out fear Cause you are worship him and praise him father we love you and we praise you tonight we thank you that you are our god you're our savior you're our healer you're our deliverer you're our way maker father we love you and we worship you and we adore you tonight and father we've come to seek you we've come to seek your will father we have come lord jesus to declare that you are our healer and Father, that by your stripes we are healed, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We lift up your holy name. Come on, worship him. We lift up your holy name, oh God. We lift up your holy name, oh God. We love you, Father. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I'm going to invite my daughter, Catherine, to come up just a minute. You know, we're focusing tonight on prayer. Just prayer, worshiping God and prayer for healing. Not only physical healing, but emotional healing. And, you know, I just asked my daughter Catherine to come up because she shared something tonight at the women's ministry that I thought would really encourage. Yeah, give her a good hand clap. She's one of my twin girls. Just turned 21. She's adult now. <laughs> But, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going through some challenges right now, I want you to be encouraged by these words. I just feel like if you're going through a challenge, like my mom said, that there are two things that I want to remind us tonight. 
And the first is that God is not the source of suffering. I know many of us have been raised with different beliefs about God and his role in suffering, but it is so important that we know that he is not the source of suffering. People throw around phrases sometimes. We can say, you know, God gave this to you, or he's trusted you with this, or everything happens for a reason, but that's not true. Things happen because we live in a fallen, broken world, according to Genesis 3. But we serve a good and beautiful and way-making and miracle-working God, and he is in the midst of your circumstances. This is so important to remember because if we believe that God is giving us our suffering, how are we then going to turn to him when we need comfort? We will always be holding him at arm's length and we can never really welcome him into our circumstances if we are believing that he is causing our suffering. And the second thing I just want to remind us of tonight is that God is with us. He's with us in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the circumstances that we're facing. Last week I was stepping into a very um, difficult anxiety provoking circumstance and I was walking into a meeting and I stopped before I entered the building and I was overwhelmed by anxiety and fear and what was going to happen and I just took a second and I paused and I closed my eyes and I just imagined Jesus standing next to me and this might sound odd to you if you haven't been in church or maybe if this isn't a familiar idea to you but this is a spiritual reality this is seeing with eyes of faith and so I saw Jesus with my eyes of faith And I had to take a moment, because this is true, the Holy Spirit is with us wherever we go, and I just said, okay, Jesus, you take the first step. And then I saw him and I, and I followed, because I know that he's the God who goes before me, and he's the voice behind me saying, this is the way that you should walk in, and he's surrounding me on every side, so there's no reason to fear. So if you're facing a circumstance tonight or a challenge, I just want to pray for you. And so if that's you, so I know who I'm praying for, could you lift your hand? And I'm going to pray for fresh strength. God, I thank you that your presence is in this place. And Father, I thank you that you are not a God who inflicts suffering, but you are a God who loves your children deeply and dearly. God, I pray that tonight you would um, reframe people's perspective of you. Holy Spirit, that you would speak truth to every heart. And God, I thank you that everyone who is walking through a challenging circumstance is going to feel overwhelmed by your peace, your power, your presence in a way that they never have been before. Jesus, I thank you for the reality that you are here with us, God, that you did not leave us, but that you gave us your spirit to empower us, to strengthen us through everything that we are facing. God, I thank you that there is no challenge that is too hard for you. And God, I pray that in the midst of circumstances, you would work the miracle of endurance in your people. God, that you would make us strong to stand under um, challenges, to stand in the face of fear, to stand in the face of sickness and declare your power and your strength, God. I pray just again for fresh strength, for fresh, fresh peace and fresh provision for your people, Lord. We love you tonight, God, in your name, Jesus. Amen. That's awesome. She's powerful. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. God is good. He is the one who sustains. He will help you every step of the way. You know, I'm going to take a few moments before we pray to read you the Word of God. Because, you know, the Bible is the will of God. And we have to know what the Bible says about healing, about sicknesses, about disease. And, and we need to understand what, what is clear about healing in the Bible. And the Bible also says that it is, it's life and it's health to us. Have you ever just read the Word of God and it's like, just you feel it. You feel the presence of God. You feel the breath of God. It's because the Word of God is alive and powerful. And so I want you, before we pray for your healing, I want you to just listen to the Word of God concerning healing. The Bible says in Exodus 15, 26, that God revealed Himself to us as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. He said, I want you to forever know at the beginning of the Bible, I am the Lord who heals you. And then in Exodus 23, the Bible says to worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be upon your food and your water and he will take sickness away from among you. 
Let's say that together. He will take sickness away from me. And none of you will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. That's powerful. In fact, I think I need to just stop and pray right now for the women. Maybe you have been, you have had a hard time getting pregnant or you've had miscarriages and you need prayer and you need a touch of God. Why don't you stand up right now? Let's pray. Let's pray real quick. That's you. Come on, stand up. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Mama, I'm going to ask you to pray for this real quick because I tell you what, every time mama prays for somebody in the next year, they have babies. Thank you, my father, that you still are a miracle worker. You haven't changed, Jesus. You healed me 38 years ago, and you haven't changed. You healed a lot of people a long time ago, and you still haven't changed. So, Jesus, we know you haven't changed. Jesus, I pray that these women that are standing will have a baby, Lord Jesus. It's their desire. And, Father, they'll raise those children to love you and to stand in awe of you and to fear you. Jesus, I know they will. They wouldn't be at church tonight if they wouldn't do that. So, Father, I ask you to put a baby in their uterus in the name of Jesus. Supernaturally, if they have anything wrong or if their husband has anything wrong, I pray that you will correct it. Do a corrective miracle, my Father, in the name that's above every name, that of Jesus of Nazareth. And Father, I pray that they will all have a child by... By, um, let me think. Do I? I would start to say Mother's Day, but that's not enough time. <laughs> By what? Summer or fall. Okay, let's say this is the beginning of fall. Let's say by next fall, by next fall, they will have a baby. Father, come here, baby. Father, put a baby in here. Baby, 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 and everyone, I put your hand on your tummy, everybody. All the ladies, put your hand on your tummy. Baby father by next fall. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that they will bring those babies. And Jesus, they'll have wonderful pregnancies without any trouble. And Jesus, the babies will be healthy and strong. They'll have an easy delivery, Father. And they will bring those babies to us, Father, to dedicate them to Jesus. And they will say, this is what God does for us, did for us because he hasn't changed. Put a beautiful baby in there, Father. And I pray that they'll get saved at an early age, Jesus, and they will spend their lives serving you. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, Amen. Amen. To further boost your faith, um, the doctors told me I wouldn't be able to have children because I I was having severe problems with tumors. And they told me that they were so large that they didn't want to operate because they feared that I would bleed to death at the time. But God is so good when we pray. And and so we got together every week and we just cursed those tumors at the root. and, and 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 the doctor told me that they'd shriveled up and died. Listen, whatever the hindrance is in your body, we command it to dry up and leave every obstruction, every hindrance, every blockage. We command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know I am the happy mother of two, not one, but two boys. So rejoice and receive this because you will have yours, I believe, next year in Jesus' name. Powerful. Do you remember, I'm just flowing tonight. I don't have any big agenda. I'm just going to flow with the Holy Spirit. But I think about how Jesus, do you remember when he went by the fig tree and it had no fruit on it? And he cursed the fig tree or he spoke to the fig tree to wither and die. And later when they walked by, they, that, that fig tree had withered. And God was just showing us or Jesus was showing us the principle of the power of our words and that we have authority in the spirit realm to 
to, to speak to things and command them to go. He said you can speak to the mountain. He wasn't really physically talking about the mountain, a mountain. He was talking about the mountain in your life about the mountain of sickness, the mountain of cancer, the mountain of diabetes, whatever you're facing, the mountain of obstacles in front of you. And so I just want to remind you to speak to that mountain. In the name of Jesus, cancer, you cannot stay in my body. In the name of Jesus, immune system, I command you to be strong and healthy. In the name of Jesus, medicine, I command you to help me and not hurt me. In the name of Jesus, speak to the sickness. Speak to your body. Let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. So important. Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me, who heals all of my diseases. Isaiah 53, 3 says, on the cross, Jesus not only bore our sins and our griefs and our sorrows, but by his stripes, we are healed. And and I believe that by his stripes, we are healed physically, emotionally, and and spiritually. You see, Jesus brought spiritual healing, made us new creatures. He heals our diseases. He makes us whole in our minds. Amen. Joel, uh, I said that, Matthew 8, 2 through 3. I love this scripture. When Jesus came uh, to the earth, the Bible says that he was God in a human body. Everything he did represented the heart of God. And and we know that the Bible says that when he was on this earth, he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the enemy. And so he represented the will of God and he was God in a human body. And one day he was approached by a, a man who had leprosy. And the man said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus put out his hand, no questions, no doubt. He touched him and he said, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the man's leprosy was cleansed. See, Jesus' words still ring true today. I am willing. I am will. I'm not only able, I'm willing to heal you. Amen. And we know the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then I think about, you know, just how many times we carry burdens, a heavy heart. And I, I, I've been there and I've done that and I, I've had a broken heart and, and been down in my emotions. And, and the Bible says in Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to those who are of a broken heart and he saves those who are crushed with sorrow and, and who are thoroughly penit- penitent. Jesus heals the brokenhearted. That's the last scripture I want to read. Psalm 147, 3, God heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. And so those were the two things that I had on my heart tonight to pray for, uh, for sickness, for healing, and for your broken heart, for emotional healing. If you're sick in your body today, I want you to stand up. Just want you to stand up because we're going to pray for healing. Amen. Just give you time. Is there anyone here you have, you have, you have terminal cancer? If you're here, come on. I want you to come down to the altar. I want my mom to pray for you. You have cancer. I want you to just come on down here. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. I want to make sure everybody gets here. How many of you have a child, a loved one, and you are, uh, uh, that is battling a sickness? I want you to raise your hand. Why don't, why don't you stand up for them? Let's just pray for all of them. Those of you that are watching online, I tell you, our heart goes out to you. If you are sick in your body in any way, just stand in, in faith where you are and receive this prayer. Thank you, Father. Anyone else who has cancer, you're welcome to come down. Father, we thank you so much for your healing power. Father, we agree with your word that by your stripes we are healed. We look to you, Jesus, because you are the one who heals us. We thank you, Father, that, Lord Jesus, the enemy has no power or hold over us. 
And Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to the mountain of sickness and we command it to go by the authority that we have in the mighty name of Jesus. And we command all sickness and disease to wither at the root and die, Father. I speak, Father, to their bodies that they would be strong and healthy and that they would live a long, healthy life, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just throw our hands up right now and we receive your healing power. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now that is present, Father. That healing anointing in the name of Jesus. Father, that is driving out all sickness and all disease, Father. For those of them watching, Father, the way we thank you that that same anointing that is here is with them right now. and There is no distance in prayer. And Father, we say be healed in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be strong in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Danger, you feel like praying anything? Craig, come on up. If anything's on your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I was sitting over there just, Lord, if you've you've been taking some kind of medication and the side effects from that medication have brought on other things, just raise your hands right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord said that you're in the room. Father, we ask right now, God, that you would reverse the damage that's been done as a result of the side effects, Lord, in the bodies of the people that have had bad reactions, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And those that have received negative prognosis, Lord, we just decree a divine reversal. In the name of Jesus, the Lord told me to speak a divine reversal over you. In the mighty name, and oh God, Lord, we just praise you. We honor you, God. We thank you. We receive healing and receive a total correction. We speak to your immune system and every white blood cell and red blood cell, to your lymphatic system and to your circulatory system, to your skeletal system, that you would begin to function as the Lord created you to function. We speak divine healing in the name of Jesus. Even as tumors, we command that they would dry up and go right now. And we thank you, God, for freedom and healing and liberty in Jesus' name. There's some of you here tonight that you're not sure what's the next step to take. You're needing divine direction. You're needing divine direction not only for healing in your life, but you're needing divine direction for God to release that healing power and that miracle in your life. And you've battled faith lately. You've battled a lot of faith. And some of you are thinking in your mind, and you thought this thought in your mind, I'm not sure if God can heal me. I'm not sure if God can meet that need. I want want you to know that's okay. We've been at that place. But I want to reassure you, don't ever underestimate God because he can do things that we can't do. And many times we underestimate him. But I'm just going to pray for divine wisdom for you right now. Divine direction right now. That God's going to begin to order the steps. He's going to direct your path. Heavenly Father... We know that you're greater than any problem that we face. What you, we can't do, you can. And God, we know many times, as, as we talked about recently, Father, we can't just pray everything away, Father. We've got to believe in faith. We've got to pray. But we've got to begin to take steps forward to begin to have the faith and belief and, God, wisdom to know what you want us to do, what doctor you need us to go to, what help you need us to get, what counseling we need, Father. God, it is miraculous that you work through people. It is miraculous that you work through your power. And, God, I I just ask right now that God you will give them divine direction you will order their steps you will orchestrate their path you will show them father it won't be cloudy it will be clear it may come up in an instant it may not be laid out like a road is laid out father but it's going to come up in an instant and father you're going to show them there and then you're going to ask them to walk by faith the next time it's going to come up in an instant it's going to be right there father because father we only have grace for today father so just like 
like manna came from heaven, what you're wanting them to do is depend upon you, is to trust you. And Father, I believe what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says in your word, trust in the Lord with all your heart and might. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And Father, we need to let go of us and move into you tonight, God. We need to let go of our ideas and move into your ideas, God. We need to know that you're going to direct our path. You're going to order our steps. And Father, as we do this, I believe and declare that breakthroughs will take place, that healing will happen, that things that were built up for years are going to come crumbling down, and that, God, you're going to do miracles in their life. In Jesus' name, come on, church, if you believe it tonight, tell them. Somebody give the Lord praise tonight. Healing is happening right now. Somebody give the Lord praise tonight. He's touching your body right now. Somebody give the Lord praise tonight. He's bringing deliverance. He's bringing reconciliation. He's creating. Hallelujah. Even in your body right now, God is moving. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God who is still alive and he still has all power in his hand. Amen. I was, uh, thank you, Pastor Lisa, for this. She, she's, I just love the Lord. He knows how to just throw you out there, doesn't he? Hallelujah. But the thing about it is God is a healer. And every opportunity that we have, we should be able and be willing to testify of God's goodness. Because that's what the enemy wants to do is he wants to shut you up. He wants to keep you quiet. Hallelujah. But it's time to declare the goodness of God. A lot of you know my story. You know I'm a worship leader here. And I've never ever had issues with my voice and a few actually it's been been a long time probably about a year now I started to have some issues with my vocal cords and I went to the doctor and he didn't really he, he saw that there was some growth that were happening on my vocal cords and he really wasn't that excited about it and he told me that I should go on voice rest for a week and you know how we should do what the doctor tells us to do amen and so I did that and when I came back he actually said the swelling that was surrounding those growths had gone down, but it actually made the growths look larger than they were before and that I would probably have to have surgery. And he actually said today was the day that I was going to schedule for that surgery. And as he stood there, he said, you know what? He just started to kind of get uncomfortable. And I don't know about you, but I kind of like it when doctors get a little uncomfortable because I believe that the Lord is starting to deal with them and they may not even know that God's dealing with them, right? So don't rush them, just keep praying, right? <laughs> and as they begin to, he began to kind of think about it and he said, I don't know. And he went back to the x-ray and he came back to me. And then he said, you know what? I just, I, I just really feel like I need to just tell you to just take some time and a rest. And I just want to let you all know that whatever the doctors, because God still, he can use doctors to give us wisdom. And if we will obey what the doctors say, but obey what God is saying and know what God can do. How many of you know that that healing process will take place in our bodies? Now, I had to be, I had to use wisdom and I had to be obedient and do those things. And it, it took about, maybe I was out for about two or three, two months or so. But when I went back to the doctor, he, he took another x-ray. And I don't know if you've ever been through to an ear, note, and throat doctor, but it's this long probe, this long probe that they stick down your throat. And um, he looked, and, and after he pulled the probe out, this rod out, he told me to look at the screen. And that swelling and those growths had, had, had shrunk so considerably. And he said, you know what? He said, I'm not going to do surgery on you. He said, I believe, he said, this is amazing how everything has really gone back into order. And I'm standing here literally about, a, it's been about a year and a half. And I haven't even been back to the doctor. I just, <laughs> I haven't even been back. I need to go back. But I've just been singing. And I've just been singing because God is good. God is a healer. Said if he did it before, he will do it again. Said if he did it before, he will do it again. Said if he did it before, he will do it again. Somebody give him praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Oh man, you may.
may be seated. I don't, I don't want him to stop. That was so good. God is good. God is a healing God. Hallelujah. Now I'm just going to pray for one more thing and then we'll, we'll just have a little bit more worship. But you know, I just feel like there are those here that you are broken in your heart and your spirit. You've been wounded. You feel like you can't go forward anymore. You feel like you just can't be yourself anymore. It, maybe someone has mistreated you. Maybe you've gone through a divorce. Maybe a, a child has forsaken you. I don't know what it is, but you know who you are and you know you need healing and, uh, and from a broken heart and healing in your emotions. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you to stand up right now and we're going to pray with with you. And I'm going to tell you right now that this is your day of healing. This is the day that things are going to shift in your favor. And God is just saying to you, it's not, it's, it's, it's time to move forward for you. Don't stay stuck in this place. Don't let a moment become a lifetime. But just because you've been hurt doesn't mean that God doesn't have a great future for her, you. And it doesn't mean that he can't heal you. I'll, I'll never forget when I went through a broken relationship and the hurt that I felt. It is so real. It is so hard and so strong and, and you, it's almost like you feel sick. To me, it's like I felt sick in my stomach all the time. And I, I cried out to the Lord and I said, Lord, I know you want to use me. I know that you want me to go forward, but I cannot do it unless you heal this hurt in my life. And I cried out to him and I prayed that prayer, Father. You said, your word says, you got to remind God of what his word says. The Bible says, call to remembrance. God God said, call to remembrance, bring to my remembrance what I have said. And so you've got to get bold with the word of God and you've got to bring it to Jesus. And you have to say, God, you said, you said that by your stripes I'm healed. You said that you would heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. And Father, I'm asking you to heal my broken heart. And I'm telling you within the next day, I'm, I'll never forget. It didn't happen right then, but within 24 hours or less, actually, I was was walking and I'll never forget I took one step and I felt that heaviness and the next step I just felt like God did surgery on me he's just stripped that out of me he healed me in a moment's time and I, I tell you that because God doesn't want you to live bowed down in that. He doesn't want you to live a crippled life. He wants you to live a full, a whole life. Free from fear and free from depression and free from anxiety and free from whatever it is that is oppressing you. So throw up your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to say, I release this to you, God. I release it to you. I lay it down. I choose to forgive those who have hurt me in the name of Jesus. And Father, I'm asking you to heal my broken heart. Bind up my wounds. Make me whole in my spirit, in my mind, in my emotions, in my body, in the name of Jesus. Fear, I speak to you. Past, I speak to you. Hurt, I speak to you. And say, you will not control my life. My history will not control my destiny. And I declare it today in the name of Jesus. I am free. Say, I'm free. Now let's rejoice. Hallelujah.
close with one more song before we leave. I was just thinking how that needs to be our declaration from this moment on. Sickness, you can't stay any longer. I say this often. I, I, I call whatever it is. I, you cannot, sickness, you cannot attach yourself to my body. I've got the oil of the Holy Spirit. You're just going to slip right off of me. So begin to declare, Jesus, you're my healer. Jesus, I thank you for giving me wisdom. I thank you for causing me to recover. I thank you that I'll live a long, healthy, strong life. Amen. Amen. Let that be your declaration. Bow your heads just a moment because we don't have a service without having a salvation prayer. And if you're here tonight and you would say, Lisa, I do not know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I've never prayed this salvation prayer. I don't have peace with God. I don't have this personal relationship with God, but I want to. I don't know where I'm going to spend eternity, but I want to know. And I want to pray that prayer with you. I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are right now. Amen. Amen. I see those hands. Many hands. I'm going to give you just one more minute. Amen. You can put it down. If you're here and you want to join, you want to join that group, you'd say, I've been, I've been with God. I've known God, but I've been away from Him. And I've been in sin. And I'm ashamed of what I've done. But I know God loves me. And I want to return to Him and rededicate my life to Him. If that's you, put your hand right up. Put your hand up. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. You can put your hand down. And I want you to pray this prayer with me and all the congregation. Say, oh God. I come to you right now, and I admit that I'm a sinner. I, I'm in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, all of my past. I repent today, and I'm going to turn around, and I turn to you, Jesus. I ask you, Jesus, come into my life. I need you to be my Lord. I need you to be my Savior. I need you to forgive me. And I thank you that you do, Jesus. I receive that forgiveness. God, I thank you that now you're my Heavenly Father. I am your child. I belong to you. I have peace with you. And when I leave this earth, I will spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You just got born again, the Bible says. It's as if God pushed a delete button and forgave all of your past, all of your sins. And the ushers are putting into your hands a book by my brother Joel that will help you. Just start your Christian walk. And I just want to encourage you to keep coming back. Let us pray for you. Let us love on you. Let us help you any way we can. Let us teach you the Word of God. But we're, we, we say congratulations. Give them another good hand clap. <laughs> Peter, I'm going to invite you back. Hey, let's stand up and worship God with one more song. Otherwise, after this, you're dismissed. We love you. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you it's not like you. Come on, let's go inside. Say, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Say, our God. Our God.
Hey!